So uh, Moved mentioned yesterday the formula for terminal values, and he's kind of like, oh, you know, it works, but you know, how did you know? It's just kind of magic. But so there's actually a mathematical proof for that. I thought I'd go through it today. It's pretty quick, and it's only like grade nine, and eleven math. So hopefully it's all right. If anyone gets confused, if I'm talking too fast or something, please just let me know. But so uh, it's the same idea as net present value. Sophie mentioned that she's heard it before. You guys might have heard the same thing. And part of the reason why I really like this mathematical proof is because it explains a lot of things. It actually explains how enterprise value can be derived from divida. It explains how you can get um, like a uh, kind of like a terminal value using discounted cash flow. So we'll walk through it, right? Um, and I'm going to start off using like the pure math notation, and then I'll, I'll kind of say this is what you know uh, this represents your growth rate and that sort of thing. And, and you'll see how many how this flexible this formula is. So it's really cool. So first, what we want to do is let's let's say we want to find out the current price for something. Let's just call that S for now for sum. Right, so sum. Um, and so, like EBITDA, what you have is your EBITDA is growing every year. So you have your first year, your first payment of EBITDA, and then your second payment of EBITDA. Now, what this is, so this is your first payment, and then you can describe every subsequent payment as that payment times R, and that's like your growth rate or your discount rate. So that's what it is for now. So every year, it, it, you multiply this term by R to get the next year's worth, and you just keep adding them up. This dot 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 ends up being really important. So this is basically perpetuity, so this is forever. So the first year, our EBITDA value is worth A. The next year, it's worth A times some multiple. So maybe it's going by a little bit. Plus, so the R term accounts for both the growth and the discount. So that's what it is for now. Right, so so far, everyone gets that? No problem? Wait, yep. Doesn't R, wouldn't R reduce it? Uh, well, R, uh, I'm using R kind of as the, the general number to uh, okay. one plus gotcha. rate gotcha, over gotcha, one, gotcha, all, gotcha. The, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna plug that in later, but just gotcha. for the simple math, this is all it is. And in terms of when you do it using math and finance or engineering or whatever, you always have to be careful of when does this formula fall apart. So obviously this number is constantly getting, or it seems to be constantly getting bigger as Paul just mentioned, but as we were talking about yesterday, this, this number actually shrinks, it telescopes down to a value. So otherwise if this kept growing, like, um, like Jason was saying, you're gonna have an infinite value for S if this keeps going up because this keeps going. So now I'm gonna do, now this is a bit of the, the math magic trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write another line underneath here that's similar to this, and we're gonna kind of use it to do some math magic. So I'm gonna rewrite, the, I'm gonna redo this, so I'm gonna say S, but instead of S this time, I'm gonna multiply it by R. We'll see why in a moment, but it, right now it's just black magic, math magic, whatever. And I'm gonna recopy this line, but instead of copying it as is, I'm gonna shift everything over. So when you multiply each of the terms here by R, so this becomes AR, this becomes AR squared. And because this is infinity, we'll just do the same, dot, 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 because that's actually this, the same as well. So have I lost anyone yet? Cool. I've just taken this line and multiplied all the terms by R. And, I've, and just for simplicity, I've just kind of shifted it over. So this becomes this, this becomes this, and so on. Cool? I'm going to do another little magic trick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to subtract the equations from each other. So I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to subtract this line. So what we get is, um, okay, this is S minus RS, or one minus RS. So that's this section. And this section, look what happens. These all cancel. So what we're left with is A. That I thought was pretty neat. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's as excited as I am, but I thought that was pretty cool. But that really takes care of the infinity part. So now you can talk about real numbers. So. Um, and so what, what we're trying to look for is S. We're trying to look for S as described by A and R. So this formula is still not all that useful. Let's switch it around a bit. S equals A over 1 minus R. And this is, now we're almost at the terminal value. Let's just start converting these numbers into the terms we're more familiar with. So S was actually the terminal value we were looking for. And A is actually the first term. But there's a bit of a misnomer here because math assumes that you're, you're collecting the first term, the second term, the third term. But you'll remember in terminal value when you do EBITDA, you actually take that year's EBITDA worth of, worth of cash. So you're actually calculating based on next year's EBITDA. So instead of saying A, I'm going to replace A by, and I hope this doesn't confuse you guys too much, but A, 1 plus G over 1 plus A. Um, and what this is is basically B is the payment for uh, is the EBITDA payment, and G is the growth rate. So every time you want to calculate what the next year's EBITDA is going to be, or next year's unlevered cash flow, or next year's whatever, first we multiply by one times the growth rate to figure out what the next year's will be, and then we discount it by the discount rate. So G is our growth rate, K is our um, discount rate. Uh, and you'll notice that R2 can be expressed in the same way. So R is equal to 1 plus G, 1 plus K. 
so in terms of when it, in terms of looking at how next year's numbers look versus this year's numbers, it's it grows by the growth rate, but you also discount it by the discount rate. So that's what that number comes from. So let's start substituting things in here. So a is equal to one plus g, one plus k. Sorry, I, this this does actually all converge, but um, one minus. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm just going to shuffle over here for a bit. So, now the bottom, I'm going to actually try to simplify the denominator, because it looks, all the stuff is kind of hard to plug into an Excel file, so let's, uh, so let's kind of trick it down a bit. So you can put the, the denominator, let's just look at this section for a bit, let's put it all into the same denominator, 1 plus k and start canceling terms. So we have 1 plus k over 1 plus k minus 1 plus g over 1 plus k. So these two terms are the same, and this part ends up becoming the 1 minus the 1, and k minus the g. So you end up with just k minus g over 1 plus k. And the top half is the same, b 1 plus g 1 plus k. But guess what happens? These two terms cancel out. And you're left with P uh, 1 plus G 1, oh sorry, K minus G. Now, let's go back and have a look at this. There we go. Look familiar? 1 plus G, R minus G. K is your R, so you just count rate. G is your growth rate. And so that's how you can use any type of cash flow, it's the same thing as this kind of uh, dividend model for if you're trying to do price to earnings. It's the same thing for unlevered cash flow for terminal value. It's the same thing for EBITDA. But so, and this is kind of why it's also some more exciting as well, is that EBITDA, how can you use this formula to describe EBITDA? Well, um, I'll just raise it. If you want to, instead of using rates, if you want to use multiples, all you have to do is, um, so pretend E is your EBITDA. What is, how do you describe your, your enterprise multiples based on this? Well, if your terminal value is this, this portion here, if you just take this number, this is actually your enterprise model multiple, enterprise value multiple, right? So if you, if you know what your growth rates are going to be, if you know what your discount rates are going to be, you can plug them into here, and this portion, this number, will come up to something like 9. So when, when, um, when Obed was like, hey, isn't it a great coincidence that some of these numbers worked out? Yes and no, because the multiple, that multiple of nine that people came up with is based on these numbers. So that's kind of why like, all this stuff kind of flows together. And I mean, finance, we also say there's a lot of art behind it, but this is kind of like the physics of, of, of finance. This is the kind of stuff you can't cheat. So I, that's why I'm kind of like really excited about that. But that's, that's your wow. little lesson. So.